like all of you, I also am a boy of the academy. Fantastic memories in this simple edifice that otherwise can only be mistaken for a building. It was our crucible, a fountainhead of what I call the global citizen. My personal experience with almost 64 years of an association with students tells me it was a school of compassion, of friendship, of empathy, of encouragement, of teachers who were self-sacrificing, of principals whose visions and evangelism and the love for the institution, the love for the growth of children and the love for the country can never, never be forgotten and should never be forgotten. Harmony comes from the word music and I say it is a school should have children as unique, different but who blend together in harmony like in an orchestra. My name is Father Blaise D'Souza. I put SJ at the back because I belong to the Jesuit family now and SJ means member of the Society of Jesus. And uh, my age today is 76. I was born in, in the year of India's independence, 1947, seven months before. So I consider myself a child of, in, of independent India. <laughs> You may have come from very diverse communities, also different parts of the country, but you never felt different. And I think uh, whatever be the economic strata of people, all were treated equally and everybody looked at each other very e equally. I think that egalitarian is a spirit which I actually don't find today when I see it in uh, other schools. But I think that's what the academy, if I would say that one value that I would still, uh, you talk to each one as a person, not as to who you are and from what background you came. So I think that was one of the good things that I liked. Uh, I still remember about the school and actually don't find it in some of the other more, if I can say, elitist. <laughs> How can I keep laughing like this? Yeah. <laughs> In school, I was Ajay Makriya because that was our family surname then. And right up uh, till the 10th, uh, 11th standard, uh, we still had that name. Then we changed our name to Piramal as a second name. I entered school in 1964 and passed out in 71. So it's now 59 years uh, that we are talking about of uh, school. Our first teacher in the fifth standard was Miss Montero, as she was for most of the people I know. I think I still remember her not only teaching us in the class, but even in the music class where she and Miss Frank, Miss Frank would play the piano and she would be there uh, helping with the music as well as seeing how people sang. We had a lovely, very nice opening ceremony with the teachers singing, God bless this school, oh God we pray. Uh, and uh, our principal gave us welcoming speech in Gujarati, our Father Palamera. And then while the thing was going on and Father Palamera crossed, down he fell into the stage. 
Oops. <laughs> because the board had <laughs> shifted. And you know, where the, the, the stage is built up with the uh, uh, storeroom underneath. So yeah. he disappeared. <laughs> One minute he was there, next minute he disappeared. That minute, that uh, memory I remember. Uh, my name is uh, Mrs. Amy Billamoria Bal. I'm a founder teacher of the uh, academy. I'm 92 years old, 92 and a half to be exact. <laughs> and you took it as well as you're doing now. <laughs> my name is Marina Frank and my nickname was Frankie. That's what the boys used to call me. My age presently is 88 years. I joined SXBA as a teacher in 1957 and served till 1995. When, we, when I first joined the academy, life was really left memorable, you know, memories there. And um, there was great sort of rapport between the principal, the staff, the students and the teachers. And this rapport enabled us to teach with confidence and courage. That's not, not difficult at all. I joined, sorry, my name is Padma Mansukhani. My nickname is Pummi, P-U-M-M-I-E. And I joined the academy in 1968. My favorite subject was French. And the two subjects I taught were English and French. Initially, French was rather easy to teach, but then it became a little more difficult as the class went higher. But it was a lot of fun. I made a lot of mistakes, of course. And some of the boys would check me. Miss, no, it's not that. Why is it like that? And I'd get flubbocked. So they would say, how do I answer? So you wait, I'll tell you tomorrow. Hi, Prakash Punjabi here. 1976 batch, Tagore House. Hi, Atul Parikh here, 1972 batch, Nehru House. I was very fond of playing table tennis in school days. And during the school, I, I used to bunk my school teacher and go down and play table tennis. And one such incident was, I went, I did that and I was caught by Father Neto. And he gave and you I was back. a real, such a big whack. And till today it is yet, sometimes I do remember this. I think I can personally say that he was instrumental in my becoming a TT star. It's because of him I represented India and the Indian school boys. It's because of him and the school, because the school used to have coaches every year. I represented India finally in the men's and had done such a great career in table tennis. In Bombay, four lads, all under 11 years, compete for the long distance sea swimming from Uran to the Gateway of India, a distance of 16 kilometers. Rajesh Mangani, the youngest, covers the distance in a record time of 2 hours 57 minutes. Hi, this is Rajesh Mangani, 1981 batch from Kabir House. On the 24th of February 1976, early in the morning at 6.34 am, I took the plunge from Uran, that is in New Bombay, to the Gateway of India, a distance of 16 nautical kilometers. For me, it was just plunging into the swimming pool because I used to train daily for three to four hours in the pool. I touched the footsteps of Gateway of India at 9.31 in the morning after two hours and 57 minutes which was a record time and suddenly people came and hugged me from all directions. I didn't know what was happening and what I had achieved. It took years to for that to sink into my brain. My name is Dr. Vinay Deshmane. I passed out from the St. Xavier's Boys Academy in the year 1976. I am a surgical oncologist, or what is commonly known as a cancer surgeon, and I've subspecialized in breast cancer surgery. And since then, I've been working at the Hinduja Hospital and Breach Candy Hospital in Mumbai. I've always enjoyed sports, and cricket has been my passion. 
I, I think one of the greatest moments in my school career was when Manoj Kaslewal and some of the other seniors came and invited us to come to the compound to take part in the selection process. And uh, there were no pads, there were just stumps and a ball and we were asked to bowl and bat. And some of us who were promising were then called to the turf wicket and to take part in the formal selection process. In fact, my last match was actually on this field at the Hindu Gymkhana where I managed to get a 50. And I met some of my best friends all through life through sports. And the great thing about sports is it teaches you to pick yourself up even when you lose and go on again. I'm Viraj Thakkar. I work as a director and the, under the Ultra H&I division of Kotak Private. And I'm really happy to say I'm one of the youngest directors to have joined them. Thanks to my school, thanks to my parents and the journey that I have been through. I would like to share this one small incident that has really changed my life. So I remember, you know, getting my uh, board exam centers here in the school. I don't know what happened. Somewhere I felt that I was not able to write, to not able to, you know, put pen to paper. And there it was, the ray of light, Mr. Shirley De Silva, who identified that something is wrong with Viraj. I need to help him. And there she was, she came, talked to me, along with Angela. They prayed for me. And I think so that really filled in, you know, the strength and motivation that she gave me that this is not the end. Life is beyond marks. Life is beyond, you know, exams. I'm so thankful to her on my every birthday. I make it a point that I call her, thank her and take her blessings. It's been 22 years now and there has not been a single year that I have not called her. Hi, my name is Sarosh Dinsha and I have graduated from St. Xavier's Boys Academy in 1986. Clearly, I've loved investments and I am the old school type of investor and we did very well for my company IDFC and for myself. And today I've reached a stage where I manage a family office where we have real estate and our own equity investments. Because our investment returns were so good, that a friend of mine and now my partner, we started something called Below Advisors, a PMS, where we manage public money. I am Ashok Monani. I passed out from Boys Academy in the year 1971. It's been over 52 years that I passed out. And today, for the last 36 years, I've been into real estate as a developer. My company is known as Ekta World. We've done over 22 million square feet this far and housed more than 14,500 families. Happy families, I can say. Uh, Rishikesh Mahfatlal, I was in uh, Nehru House. Uh, we passed out in 1971. Uh, my father's way of doing business was, of course, for him it was very critical that the, everyone should be happy. Uh, that was important. And secondly, the process of how we are doing it was absolutely critical for it. Then the result would be there. Uh, so he was successful, but it was important that it was very ethical and also seeing that, uh, you know, we have to measure up to our own standards and whether someone is watching or not. Hi, I am uh, Ravi Kadam, a graduate of St. Xavier's Boys Academy. I passed out from the school in 1974. My most favorite teacher at all time is the first teacher I had in the academy, Wilma Montero, who taught us in the fifth standard and who taught us English, how the language is written, spoken, how it is articulated and pronounced. The second, I think, uh, abiding influence among teachers was that of Ms. Billy who refined our language and our writing and due to whom today whatever I am as a lawyer and the language and the fluency with which I am supposed to articulate my cases is substantially due to her teachings and her don'ts I think remain with me more than her do's. You know, when boys come back and when they tell you these little things that you never 
the the effect that you had on them the influence you had on them and how you helped them change these are something that i cherish more than anything in the world i am mrs monica rose and i have been i started my journey in the davis boys academy in 1992 and it has been this is my 32nd year in the academy and it has been a wonderful journey i am dr shashank shah and currently i am uh, leading higher education at niti ayog uh, the premier public policy think tank of the government of india every individual needs to have environmental and ecological sensitivity and responsibility that's a vital role that we need to play as part of our lives personal and professional if you love nourish and cherish the earth she will love nourish and cherish you in return My name is Saroj Kumara. I graduated uh, from St. Xavier's Boys Academy in 1970. I have to say that uh, if not for the experience that I had at St. Xavier's Boys Academy, I would not be in the very very fortunate position that I'm in right now. My onward vision for myself, of course, I've been very much involved in uh, civic activities in in various uh, civic boards uh, with the realtors, with the neighborhood associations, with number of companies uh with number of non-profits uh, mo mostly in the sustainability and ecology area and this is uh, my very great passion in life because if we don't have a world worth living in what the heck are we doing all this for Fifth June Environment Day. Me and my team, all for one, is going to paint a recycled bench made of plastic, and we are going to decorate it in school. Hello, this is Arav Engolekar, and I am the founder of All for One. That means everyone, the whole society, for one project. And uh, I started this when I was eleven uh, years old, and when the lockdown was going on, everybody was hesitated at home. so i thought that there were uh, there will be poor people to who are hesitated so uh, then i want i wondered that uh, i should help them so i created an ngo and told my friends to to join and they also took the initiative so i didn't stop and continued and now i am a successful uh, founder of all for one and i'm damn happy that the whole society is helping me and helping the poor people who are in need हे आरव ने जे स्टार्ट के एन जी ओ इन द एज ऑफ इलेवन ट्वेल्व इयर्स ये मैं ऐक्चुअली खूब प्राउड सारक हा एज मदे को कर स्कूल ने पाला सपोर्ट के टीचर्स है प्रिंसिपल है मेरा सपोर्ट के तुम्हें पुश करा क्या आज एक स्वतः से एक एन जी ओ ओपन के आई थिंक जस्ट मेकिंग अ डिफरेंस इन द लाइफ ऑफ चिल्ड्रन स्पेशली एंड फॉर देम टू रिमेम्बर द स्मॉल थिंग्स दैट आर way past my memory that is the highlight for me i just wish children have a good childhood that is what children should be happy individual so that the world will be a better place so i'm miss prima narona and i joined since xavier's boys academy on the 1st of june 2010 and it's my 14th year since i'm the principal of this school The journey at St Xavier's Boys Academy has been exciting, challenging and fulfilling. I'm Savio De Mello, teaching here since June 1990 and vice principal since 2005. In addition to teaching, I handle coordination of activities, timetables, school examinations and students with special needs, mainly those with learning disabilities. This is Vyom Podar, he's my son. We got his admission done in school Xavier's Boys Academy in the year 2011 and the reason for me to choose Xavier's was 
द टीचर्स इतने अच्छे हैं फैकल्टी इतनी अच्छी है स्कूल इतना अच्छा है जेवियर्स में ही एडमिशन दिलाना चाहिए जेवियर्स में से इसने अभी रिसेंटली पास किया है टेंथ स्टैंडर्ड और मेरे लिए जो चीज़ें हैं जेवियर्स से इसने जो सीखी हैं वो यह है सेल्फ कॉन्फिडेंस सेल्फ एबिलिटी और अपने अंदर चीज़ों में काफ़ी चेंज लाना जो चीज़ें इसको खुद नहीं पता थी इसके अंदर हैं वो स्कूल के टीचर्स ने इसके अंदर इंकलकेट की हैं और इसको काफ़ी स्ट्रॉन्ग बनाया है अपने अंदर और ये यही चीज़ें मेरे को लगता है ये अपने साथ लेके जाएगा स्कूल से अपने फ्यूचर के लिए जो कि बहुत ज़रूरी है हे आई एम व्योम आई हैव जस्ट पास आउट फ्रॉम टेंथ एंड आई एम लुकिंग फॉर टू अचीव ग्रेट हाइट्स एंड टू मेक माई स्कूल प्राउड In my 14 years I think the most memorable experience is growing and learning with children and with all those who have come in contact with me so it's a growing learning experience Among the most memorable moments at the academy I would like to remember the golden jubilee year when along with the then principal Mrs Shirley De Silva the manager late father Edmund Carrasco and the entire staff we had a series of events and the crowning glory was when every student of the academy right from the kindergarten to standard 10 participated in the musical heroes that was staged at St Xavier's High School grounds i still remember when we were playing the fool and uh, in the hindi class since uh, mr joshi was a little late we were doing mimicry and you know trying to imitate all the students especially the teachers we didn't realize that father netto had silently appeared somewhere and was watching and those raps on the knuckles with the ruler i still remember hello everybody my name is tayer shabir and uh, i passed our school more than 15 years ago and uh, there's not a day that goes by that i think i don't think about school because it affected me in so many ways and it's an honor uh, to be a part of this institution i'm i'm an actor now and uh, and an artist it, i know the value of of these things you know as we as we work in life right now and i can't uh, i can't thank the school enough uh, thank you sxba for giving us what we have i love you 25th june 1975 was a great year in my life Where at the Lord's Cricket Stadium, One Day Finals, India vs West Indies, I was broadcasting live to the whole world, to India particularly. We won that match, and I rushed to Wimbledon same time and gave nine broadcasts in two hours for the Wimbledon Championships that day for the whole country. The only Indian in Asia, I'm very proud to say today, because I've achieved it, is to cover 85 Grand Slams, 35 Wimbledons in a row. No Indian oration has covered that. I feel great about those moments of time. My name Atul Prem Narayan. Passed in 1965 since Xavier's Boys Academy. My goal in life is to see the youth of this country, the boys and girls dominating the sporting arenas in the world in the Olympics, in the Asian Games, the World Championships and in all the tournaments across the world. With wings in my heels and wings like chariots of fire. I began my sporting journey in St Xavier's Boys Academy. Hi, I am Mahesh Mangani. I graduated from St Xavier's Boys Academy in 1977. I had the honor of representing India in the 1982 Asian Games for water polo and we won the bronze medal for that. Then I went on to represent india in 1984 at the uh, asian championships i do remember all our all my teachers who were just so brilliant in their own uh, subjects that they were teaching us so i mean you know as far as the teachers go everybody had their best that they instilled in in me um and the sincerity that they talked with really made a difference made it easy for me to understand those topics and and do well hi i am viran mayani class of 1981 of the revered institution the saint xavier's boys academy i feel a little awkward making this video but i'm delighted to do so on the request of the alumni association because i strongly believe that i owe it to the institution's 
phenomenal faculty members who shaped my life. I have very recently been inducted as the Honorary Governing Board member of the Unity of Nations for Climate Change Council. And I am so blessed that I was selected for an issue which is very pivotal in the current times. I am Dr. Kamlesh Desai, currently the president of the Boys Academy Past Students Association. This is an autonomous, independent organization affiliated to and often and more often than not working for the benefit of our parent alma mater, which is St. Xavier's Boys Academy. But the real action for Xavier's Boys Academy began in the, in the last decade or so, when under the presidentship of Mr. Dalal, where we worked together to create a large number of functions and shows to bring back, cobble together and bring back in an extremely active form ex-students who would understand the ethos of our, our school, the values and the value of our teachers. A good bonding was with Mrs. Bhal, Miss Billy Moria at that time, because she really took me under her wing and she taught me everything that I know today about teaching. That was raw, absolutely raw when I joined. Just doing your B.A. doesn't give you any qualification. She really trained me, brought me up literally, and uh, she corrected me. And from her, I learned the art of teaching. Our first principal was a very fine gentleman. He would meticulously go to each child's house no matter how far it was and they'd send the car for him but he said don't worry don't worry i'll find my way i'll find my way and he he told me that he went essentially to see the conditions under which our children lived so that we could be more forgiving of them if they don't do their lessons every time he said, do you know, miss, that there are children living five in a room, six in a room. Said, How do you expect them to uh, sit down every day one hour and do uh, lessons? Father Palomera was very gentle, but Father Palomera was very, very firm. He kept his eye on the students who constantly were a nuisance and he didn't say anything, he didn't give them any punishment but at the end of the year there was a letter, please leave the school. I think our school taught us one thing that no matter how much mischief you did, because then it was just mischief, how much wrong you did, there was nothing worse than not owning up to your own mistakes. So in school I remember if you owned up to what you did, there was no punishment. But if you tried to hide it, then there was. The students were really very, very clever, intelligent and obedient. Obedient? Yes, yes. And you know, the first year after I finished my B.A., I was teaching in St. Mary's. And there, I, the students were very rough and so compared to that, these were angels. And as you said, for Mrs. Bhal, yes. when we had our farewell socials, all the students would touch her feet before leaving. How nice. Yes. How nice. They were so grateful to her and she deserved it. My name is Feroza Kalra. I used to be Miss Patel when I joined the school. And uh, I joined in 1966. I left in 72. And I had the most wonderful years of my life in the school. I've always thought both then and now, the boys to be very respectful, helpful, intelligent, capable and determined as well. I too have been nurtured by them since now teaching is a two-way process. I also walked alongside with them learning many new things and have been nurtured by, this, by them in the sense they taught me new levels of patience and also tolerance within myself. But the entire staff of SXBA that helped to make 
the brilliant young minds into wonderful human beings that they are today. I am sure they have learnt the value of excellence and perseverance as well. My name is Deepak Prem Narayan. Uh, I'm in business today and uh, I believe I've been partially successful in what I'm doing in business and in philanthropy. I owe a lot of this to my old school, St. Xavier's Boys Academy, and particularly to my principal, Father Palomera. This man was exceptional. He realized that studies was not my forte, but he took that in a way to sort of give me confidence. He used to visit every child's home once a year. And I remember that when he came to my house the first time, I was terribly scared. I was scared because he'll tell my parents that this kid of yours is not at all good at studies. What he said was, he says, one day this man is going to be very successful. Now that, coming from a man who was my principal, gave me immense confidence. So I kept wondering, and as a youngster, I went to him one day. I said, Father, what do you see in me? He says, I see a leader. I see somebody who's confident and you will make it. He nominated me to be the first president of the Old Boys Association. He says, Deepak, you will take this ahead. And with that, I said, why do you choose me? He says, because your heart lies in giving to others and to make this a success. Today, by the grace of God, I'm actively associated with the UN uh, Women for India. I chair the board in India. Uh, which is a very active board with Kiran Mazumdar, Sangeeta Reddy and my board, Noel Tata and others, where we focus on gender equality and women economic empowerment. I'm also very actively involved with my own NGO, Anushka Foundation for Eliminating Clubfoot. Clubfoot is when you're born with one or both feet turned inwards. Hi, my uh, brothers in arms and friends. My name is Ankur Tandia. I passed out from St. Xavier's Boys Academy in 1978. I gained my qualifications in general surgery, followed by plastic surgery, as I was enchanted and fascinated by the art and science of putting things together on fragile human tissues, either rent asunder by trauma, disease, surgery, or just being born with deformities. This guiding passion has led me to doing humanitarian work in over 47 humanitarian missions treating children with cleft lip and palate, post burn and birth deformities all over the world. After completing some time as a lecturer at KEM Hospital, I came to the UK where I did my training at world famous institutes, including the Queen Victoria Hospital at East Grinstead, uh, which was a birthplace of Royal Air Force Burns uh, surgery at the Radcliffe Institute in Oxford, which predates the actual birth of the United States and at Stoke Mandeville, uh, which is a major spinal institute, which was the beginning of the Paralympic Games. After I finished my training, I became a consultant surgeon within the Royal Air Force and the National Health Service. I've had an extremely varied and interesting life over the past 30 years in the UK, being deployed uh, on five occasions to war-strewn uh, countries and locations, both in Afghanistan and Iraq on five occasions, and holding many, many posts within the Royal Air Force. My name is Deepak Bhojwani and I'm a graduate, a proud graduate of the school St. Xavier's Boys Academy, which is in Marine Lines, Mumbai. Uh, I basically graduated in, I did my SSC exam and passed in 1968, along with all my friends. I joined the school in the fifth grade, I believe it was in 1962. And since, since the day I joined, I always felt very much at home in school. I never had any problems with any of my friends, the teachers. Of course, there was the usual bullying and ragging and so on and so forth, which I got along on as anyone else did. We had lots of uh, kids from different classes, from different categories of society. And there were very rich people, from very rich families, very rich kids. And there were people like me who came from modest backgrounds and they were from different religions. We all worked and studied together without any discrimination, without any feeling of being even 
very different from each other. Uh, our tastes may have been slightly different, but as kids, we all like the same things. Basically, sweets, pastries, Coca-Cola, you name it. My vision for India is like others that of course we want to be the best in the world but there are certain things that we need to change to do that and one of them I believe is this uh, attitude of it's okay so uh, if you want to be the best which I want India to be uh, there is a time when you don't say things are okay so uh, I urge people that we want to make this country the best then you know let's make it the best don't uh, compromise Hi, I am Dr. Malav Shroff. Uh, I started St. Xavier's Boys Academy in 1984, passed out in 1990. Uh, in academics, uh, don't get it wrong, the school was brilliant and I made it to medicine. Uh, I passed MBBS from KEM Hospital and did a DPhil in Oxford. My biggest achievement in sports was uh, qualifying for the Olympics and uh, going to Athens in 2004 and walking in that opening ceremony with the Indian contingent. Uh, nothing will ever in my life beat that moment. Hi, I am uh, Nitin Paranspe and I'm currently the Chief uh, People and Transformation Officer at Unilever. Now it's said that there are two things that impact you most profoundly in your life. One, of course, is the, uh, is the family you're born into and uh, over which, frankly, we have little influence. It's simply a matter of uh, uh, accident. The second is the school that you go to. I feel blessed on both counts. My six years at St. Xavier's Boys Academy was, uh, was a period of, of joy, of enjoyment, but it was also a period of profound growth and learning. Let me say Namaste and Bonjour from Paris. My name is Vishal V. Sharma. I am currently the Ambassador and Permanent Representative of India to UNESCO in Paris. As an Ambassador and Permanent Representative of my country, I represent India's interests and promote relations between India and UNESCO in the fields of education, science, culture and communication. My goal is to see our nation emerge as a strong, modern and vibrant country that harnesses its immense potential and contributes positively to the world. The India moment is now. The moments at St. Xavier's Boys Academy are for a lifetime. It's not the one who came first. It's not the one who cares the most. It's not the one who stayed the longest. But it's St. Xavier's Boys Academy which came and never left our lives forever. The morning assembly. How can we feel and how can we forget that morning assembly? My name, Atul Prem Narayan. Passed in 1965, St. Xavier's Boys Academy. Janagana mana adinayak jaya he Bharat Bhag Vidata I am Father Everest Nunes. I was principal of St. Xavier's Boys Academy from 1981 to 1984. 
there's been a long journey in education and I cherish in a very special way the years spent at St. Xavier's Boys Academy. I am now here to continue whatever I can do in the field of education and in the pastoral field. God has blessed me with many talents and blessed me with many collaborators, parents, teachers, alumni, students, all have contributed to my growth. So St. Xavier's Institute of Education is a premier teacher education institution in Mumbai and um, it has completed 70 years now and we are very proud to say that our alumnus are serving in different um, schools in Mumbai, all over India as well as abroad. Hi, this is Rishab Shah. I have been a proud student of St. Xavier's Boys Academy from the years 1981 to 1986. The school has taught me not only from the textbooks but lessons of life, formative uh, thoughts and uh, it has in fact molded a good part of my nature. The prayers which we used to uh, do early morning in the school hall and which have really sunk into us as really life goals and uh, guiding light, they've been very helpful to us. It has inculcated values. The Jesuit manner of education has been very, very influential and it has guided us all through. In fact, for me, I would say it has guided me right through from school to college and right into my profession. In the profession, it always helps to do something more beyond the call of mere commercial give and take. And I'm proud I've been able to do it and I feel humble too that God gave me this opportunity. So my name is Josh Shah and I graduated from SXBA in the year 2019. I was in the Tagore house. I was the house captain in the 10th grade. And when it comes to my life in SXBA and how it has shaped me, how it transformed me through the years, um, I, it's, it's been a crazy progression, but that's what the school is. I started off as a student who would cry to go home. And then by the end of the whole journey, I never wanted to leave school because it, it became a second home for me. Hi, my name is Milan Bengali from the 1978 batch Tagore House. I would like to share a memory of uh, Father Austin. I represented the school in the inter-schools athletic meet uh, which normally took place at the University Sports Ground or CCI. We didn't have uh, too many athletes uh, reaching the finals, so not too many students came to cheer. However, Father Austin always made it a point to come and cheer me during all the heats. When I would go to the starting line, uh, naturally I would be a little nervous, but it was so comforting to see Father Austin standing with both his thumbs up, uh, with a smile, saying, buck up. I'm Ms. Terezita Digama, been here for the past 33 years. Something very special about my students is when I was in 8th standard, I had a very unique class. And I think it wasn't even my birthday, but I was a little angry with some of the students because of certain things that happened within, within the class. But when I went into the class the next day, they had written, Happy Birthday, Mrs. Digama, and there was a, a cake on the table. So I said, it's not my birthday, but they said, no, we want to celebrate your birthday because it's a new day today. Boys, if you remember, you jumped over these walls. If you remember, you bought Singh Chana outside. Every single memory in egalitarian surroundings. We were all equal. We were all friends. We never believed in any discrimination because we all wore the same uniform. That is one of the finest memories of St. Xavier's Boys Academy. Very often I find myself walking up the back staircase for some reason, going through the third floor and going to the fourth floor through the Padres, you know, there are fathers' residences and going up. And I, I keep getting this recurring dream, maybe, you know, I, mean, I must have done something then which has kind of stuck with me. But my older brother, who passed away at the age of 19, was a champion athlete. He was the captain of the cricket team. After finishing school, he was a Bombay University boxing champion. 
he was the all round athlete in a school who won that all round prize for you know all the running and high jump and low, you know long jump and everything hi i am chaitanya dalal uh, i joined the school in 1965 uh, and i was passed out in 1971 after the school we lost touch with each other and we went about our ways college etc but in 1975 father neto called us up and informed us that father provincial had decided to close three elite schools campion school boys academy and st mary's that is where we all got shocked and we decided to fight against this decision what we did was to find out first from the bombay xavier in cooperation what exactly was the problem the priest at that time told us that they wanted to serve the poor because at that time the new pope in rome was from the east block so one of our ex students went to rome to meet the black pope and get the decision reversed which he did on the condition that there will be a lay principal in both these schools so we had a lay principal and the school school has survived till today uh, because of that uh, uh, fight that we had the boys academy past students association gave us this award in january 2010 and admitted us to the hall of fame of the school as being the savior of the school and preventing it from being shut down my friends my students and colleagues advocate sachin chandrana professor suresh malkani 1961 first batch of the academy darmesh kharwar amrish shah a filmmaker pranav sangvi secretary jayant yelve who has been here for so so long and now adding to him firdaus edenwala and maybe a few others who will assist us i'm grateful for them for all the encouragement and the support they have given me to allow me to help things fructify and for progress to be made at the end of babsa look forward to more things as we go along god bless and grateful i am to have been a part of sinzavius boys academy Hi, I am Sachin Chandrana, 91 batch, treasurer and vice president of Babsa. Down memory lane, we all will agree that our school has imparted education and values within us which will remain forever. Our school taught us three important values of self-discipline, integrity and fighting spirit. Each one of them have added value to my life as a lawyer and as a litigator. Our school will always remain in our minds forever and we always will work to keep its flag flying high and we have to look forward not just to our own lives but to the lives of our children and our grandchildren and future generations and not just for us humans but also for all the creatures that inhabit this planet and share this lonely blue dot in in the cold cold wide huge universe that's out there I'm uh, Mrs Shirley De Silva and I was principal of St Xavier's Boys Academy for 11 years. We encouraged our students to go far beyond the textbook. Throughout the year we had seminars, workshops, inter-school competitions, marathon running. Uh 10 years back I got into the sport and since then I have been running practically every year. In Bombay I do a half or a full. I have run the London Marathon 3 months back. Last year I did Chicago. A few years back I did Berlin and New York. Um uh, if the gods are kind, I would like to do Tokyo next year, maybe two oceans next year. Um uh, that's one passion. It's a tough sport. It 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 uh, you really have to be fit. You really have to work for it. It's a lot of perseverance, a lot of setbacks. One incident about Mr. Kelkar, our science teacher. 
it was a holy day and instead of giving us a holiday he he gig, uh, brought up the idea of having extra lectures so i was really irritated because i was getting late for my training session in that frustration i emptied out my full fountain pen on his back the full class was in splits like what's happening what's wrong with rajesh today well one thing very clear i mean, I, i would say um, and particularly the latter part of my school part uh, i certainly would take studies more seriously uh, and uh, sports which i really enjoyed and i relish it so much uh, I, i could definitely have done more that's one thing i will do it uh, and the third would be uh, just i was a bit too shy and i would just be more relaxed and have fun and how can we ever forget an institution of that kind magnificent par excellence it's a piece of art across the world because it gives you knowledge and gives you happiness joy a platform a pedestal to move ahead in life if you stand before it if you look at the picture of the zavers boys academy and you put your hands and look at what taj mahal is all about then you think this is the taj mahal of your life the boys academy reminds me of a very famous quote by swami vivekananda who said those who live for others truly live the rest are more dead than alive i think it this is i think this sense of living for others is the key message i would like to share with everyone uh in my personal and professional life i always focus on creating impact at scale so you need to have passion and a continuity of process you don't give up even when you lose and i think this is something which is very common among anything that you do in life but especially among a medical field where you have often do to lose patients and uh, something like sports though there are countless great moments during my time spent at the SXBA but the ones that stand out prominently in my memory are the selection for the team of school kids at the Institute of Science Regal Mumbai by professor T S Subramaniam It was an incredible experience that helped me participate in the making of a superconductor and verify the Meissner effect of superconductive levitation at liquid nitrogen temperature in the 8th grade. since last few years since i have retired i am doing more social work and this is continuing with what was built into me when i was at school i must thank especially father palomera that he had built into us together with the teachers and built into us to be honest sincere hard working and fight all injustices done to citizens now this continued in my retired life our school was an experimental school an elite school where uh, we had a lot of uh, rich people and also some not so rich people and that gave us a very big a very wide expanse of understanding Apart from my work, my passion remained my family, my two daughters, my two amazing grandchildren, occasional affairs with tabla and saxophone, photography, as you can make out from the wall over here, poetry, voracious reading and writing, and engaging with my peloton. So you know, this journey, which began in 1972, has been the most uh, important, game-changing, life-molding. path breaking journey that anybody ever laid out for me
In 1978, a geography teacher once asked his class, Do you want water? All of them said, Yes. And guess what he said? Then damn it. Then he looked at them with a twinkle in his eye and said, India has the maximum number of goats in the world. And he stopped and stared. It took them some time to realize he was also referring to them. Father E. Neto was the major domo force of St. Xavier's Boys Academy. A sporting visionary, an amazing man of extraordinary grit. He was also a daunting disciplinarian. Kneeling down, walking in a straight line, polished shoes, well-ironed uniforms, badge in place, or you went home or your parents were called, were all part of his ploy and played to groom the best boys of the academy. And even today, their boys are grateful for all that he did for them. My long journey of education, of service in the field of education, which includes St. Xavier's Boys Academy, I think I owe my success to two values. Teamwork and equality. Unless we work together as a team, we cannot achieve success. The school's motto is in Latin. Tenebras illuminare et vias dirigere. To enlighten darkness and direct the paths. As you desire it, so you will it. As you will it, so you deed it. And as you deed it, it is your destiny. I take pride in saying that I made great friends in school. Mujhe gam nahi hai ke zamana mujhse badal jaye. Zindagi St. Xavier's Boys Academy ke saath hamesha thi, hai aur hamesha rahegi. You know the friendships that you make in school and college are the real friendships which continue over time. Every individual needs to espouse the basic human values truth, righteousness, peace, love, and non violence. We were taught to be honest, sincere, hardworking, and to fight for the injustices done to citizens. The values that our school taught us, they stay with you forever. I don't think college has that kind of impression on you as the school has. Because in college, you are free. You do so many things which you want to do. In school, it's more regimented. But that regimentation gave us a discipline which helps me in my work. We aim at human excellence, which is, goes far beyond academic excellence, and getting students to reach out in compassion to the underprivileged. You see, IQ is God-given, but EQ is what we can form and we have to build them to work as a team, to know how to deal with others. Make it the best in the world, be the best in the world because that's what gives uh, life its uh, meaning. I would like to thank in a very special way all our ex-students who as part of BAPSA come back to school and support us. Thank you BAPSA for being with us. Why should people who are now in their 50s, 60s, 70s bother about St. Xavier's Boys Academy? But St. Xavier's Boys Academy has rubbed into you all. <laughs> in the COVID years, it was a difficult time for all our current teachers. So BAPSA, as a collective, decided that we would use some of our money in which would otherwise perhaps have been taxable and help our teachers with COVID insurance.
so the key business insight is the quotation which uh, you read in my office as your desire is so is your will as your will is so is your deed and as your deed is so is your destiny so yes the people talk about that this is my destiny i'm destined to do this no according to me you make your destiny by what you do and it starts by a, uh, having a deep driving desire we owe our education our upbringing and much of our growth at this crucible to the St. Xavier's Boys Academy, Father Francis Xavier, St. Francis Xavier, and St. Ignatius of Loyola. This is where we began our educational journey, and from this crucible sprang the fountainhead of some of the finest global citizens that are there in the world. I love being back here.